the best one copaint solution in the gaming industry just got bigger. Since their release, hobbyists have been begging for more. And after extensive development with feedback from customers, we did just that. Speedpaint has grown to include 90 colors in total, including 10 of the industry's first one coat metallics. With boxed options to suit every budget, whether you're just getting started or if you must have the most wanted speed paint colors. Soon you'll be able to sample or replenish your speed paints when our beautiful and comprehensive display hits your friendly local game store, including all 90 colors and a highly requested larger 100 milliliter bottle of speed paint medium. Find speed paint in stores this summer or pre order today at www.thearmypainter.com. Dave here from Banner Badgers. Hello, uh, welcome back to another. What is this? Oh, was the Great British Brush Off? Of course it is. Uh, here's Steve. There's Steve over in the corner. Hello, hello, uh, hello, Mike, hello. There he is. Uh, my camera has decided to turn off, but we are joined by JD Wicker. Oh, look, I got it right in the right direction the first time. JD Wicker. Um, nope. Cool biscuits. <laughs> Sorry, Wicker. Well, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Steve didn't correct me though. Wiper. There we go. I'm, I'm trying to listen to Twitch at the same time to make sure we are actually sending sound. <laughs> so, so I can hear three things going on. That's okay. We have enough people watching us just to, to tell us if nothing is coming through, which which is what we are going to rely on you, the audience, for for today. Now we're going to be here for the next couple of hours. We're going to be painting up some fantastic looking uh, frameworks. I can just bring that up on. Here we go, camera. So, uh, JD, you are going to tackle the troll. I um, am. This is this is some wave two of the frameworks. Uh, Steve, which which one are you doing? You're doing the troll. Medusa. Well? Medusa. The Medusa. Queen okay, of the Gorgons. Can... What was that, Steve? Queen of the Gorgons. I'm I'm going to be doing the gargoyle. Let's see if we can find the Medusa. There, there she is. Go. Absolutely fantastic. And it's a great pose. But anyway, we are going to concentrate on what JD is doing, which is the <laughs> troll. So, um, without further ado, how are you doing, JD? Doing well. How are you guys? We're, we're okay. Good. We're okay. Yeah. We're, Steve, we're Steve's like, yeah, <clears throat> Steve's gone a bit calm. I need, I need to, I'm going to hand it over to Steve because I need to disconnect my camera now and reset that up. So, uh, Steve, over to you. I'm, I'm in the chair. I, I have full power and push buttons and everything. Uh, by the way, I won't touch <laughs> no, I'm not going to give you that much anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, JD, how have you been? Busy over the summer, I hope? Yes, definitely busy over the summer. Uh, lots and lots of things going on at WizKids. Uh, any, anything did, did I hear the magic build? word there? <laughs> was, was that, was that uh... Lots of things going on at WizKids. Let's start there, shall we? Yeah, I can start, as we mean to go on. We just did an Alliance Open House uh, last weekend. Uh, I wasn't there, but uh, we had a lot of people talking about uh, our Unpainted Miniatures line there. Um, we did a couple of presentations to retailers, and um, I don't know that that information is public yet, so I can just tell you that there will be some uh, interesting new developments in UPM, the Unpainted Miniatures, coming your way. That, that's outside the frameworks range. That is outside uh, frameworks, yeah. yes. So, so more Knowles and stuff. <clears throat> yes, exactly. Kind of stuff, yeah. Yes, yeah, exactly. Good. That's good. Um, so you are painting the troll. Yes, I am. That would be and troll at right this, here. this point in the evening, we would normally be talking about uh, how you're going to go about that. So Dave obviously doesn't need to talk about it because he's going to paint it exactly as shown on Fox. Um, but <laughs> how did but you what, know? <laughs> <laughs> what style are you going for? 
JD. Uh, you know, uh, I will probably paint this pretty close to exactly what's on the box as well, simply because, you know, <laughs> it's a troll. It tends yeah. to look the same. You know, you rarely find trolls that have, like, you know, uh, stripes or, or, you know, polka dot patterns on them. But, you know, hey, I may go after that with some of these little uh, weird little growths that it's got. And this is one of the, the mutated trolls, as you can see. It's got that extra arm. Yeah. It's got... Uh... It's, yeah, it's got a horrible. It is. It is creepy and horrible. Uh, it really <laughs> is. I mean, the, and also we've always said um, this is frameworks wave wave two, frameworks wave one. All of the frameworks, the definition on these models is incredible. So when you see this is like one of the renders that you would see on the box, mm -hmm. but it it really does look like that. Um, the features yeah. are as sharp. It's it, you haven't got anything. Um, it, it is all them small little bits as well, like the teeth yeah. and the gums that you can see. That that definition uh, between the two, which makes it easier to paint, actually, if you know it's there. Yep. Yeah. Now, if you, the audience, while you're watching this live, go and get your paints, grab a cuppa, and chill out for the next couple of hours and paint along with us. But if you have any questions for JD over there, for Steve over there somewhere, uh, or even for me. Ask away if you have particular questions for the pro painter and intermediate painter or beginner painter. Ask them, raise them, shout out loud. But uh, we would love you to kind of uh, paint along with us, share your stuff um, on Instagram. We'll be putting our stuff up on Instagram so you can check those out as well. Okay, look, I pushed the button. Oh, look, you pushed the button. All right. <laughs> I was going to say, you can also find all of the framework stuff available right now um, at WizKids, the shop is shop.wizkids.com. Mm -hmm. So you can also go and check that out. Now, I'm also going to throw in some background noise. Now, previously, we had these kind of adventure music going on. Um, but we're going to try something different. We're going to try nice and calm. This is called the Elven Glade. Some, some noises of nature and the stream and a little bit of music going on. So if it, you, the audience, who are watching live, if, if you, the audience, are on YouTube and it's too too loud, it's too late. But <laughs> uh, if, it's for you, if it's too loud for you, do let us know. I was half expecting the song Diggy Diggy Dwarf or Diggy Diggy Hole to suddenly come blaring on. <laughs> There's still time. <laughs> there is still plenty, plenty of time. Don't threaten me with a good time. All right. Have we hit the starter pistol? Is it time to start painting? Yes, it is. All right. It is. And we have a question as well. So Dragonborn Industries, oh. uh, he is asking, is the intention, I'm assu assuming WizKids in terms of frameworks, to do the entire 5e monster manual? <laughs> uh, we will see. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a tremendous starting point to work from, right? Yeah, I, I've got a I've I've got a very good question. You probably will say no to, but no. Good. <laughs> is is I'll ask it anyway. I'm going to ask it. Is WizKids already working on miniatures yes. for the oh. next D and D Monsters Manual? I can't confirm or deny that. Um... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> See, it's not a no. It's not a no. So you're wrong. I didn't actually say no to it. How, how different do you reckon the art will be than a monster manual? Sorry, ne next mon monster manual. You know, I think that's probably a question better uh, posed to Wizards of the Coast um, because they're going to have a much better idea of, uh, you know, which artists they're using and which artists are setting the tone. So, WizKids, you heard that you heard the challenge. If you <laughs> dare to come on and face us in a live Q and A as we talk about what could be included in the next monster manual, um, get in touch. Right, I better start painting. <laughs> yeah, because you've got a lot to do. I have got a lot to do. Look, <laughs> have you seen how big these wings are? when they're extremely close to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> it 
Evening, Baron. Thank you for joining us. Warrior Prince is sitting there. Dragonborn Industries. Thank you very much. I'm gonna try some of this. So I'm I'm oh yeah, I need to make my notes. So I got into the habit of doing this now. Is uh writing down my details, um what I'm drawing up on the paints. So there is another question. Um it's any any new wave info for frameworks, any models coming we didn't know about before? Uh, nothing I can talk about yet. It's great having you on for a chat. <laughs> yeah, I love being able to like you know fill you guys in uh, so thoroughly <laughs> on everything. You know, just no question, uh, you know, not allowed. <laughs> I just may not like actually give you a solid answer. <laughs> So thanks for this opportunity to uh, stand here and bluster. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you allowed to talk about how production's going for, for Wave 3? Um, yeah, more or less. I mean, you know, everything's on track. The files are at the factory. And what, what about shipping? When are you expecting to, to ship? Um, that is not really a production question, so I can't really answer that one yet. <laughs> nice try, though. <laughs> we we'll keep, we'll keep trying. We we'll keep trying. Um, how many? That's a uh, shipping so question, the, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> how many? What, where, where are we now? We're mid September. When did that happen? Mid September. Every year it creeps up on us. But yeah, mid September um, is where we are right now. What is, or rather, how many WizKids releases will we will we squeeze in between now and Christmas? Um, the December holiday season. I don't really know what the, the total number of that would be. I mean, there's always like something coming down the pipe, and I know that there's uh, definitely a lot of uh, pre-painted stuff. That is coming out. Um, I just kind of got a goodie bag of stuff yesterday, um, but um, yeah, I mean, our normal uh, unpainted miniature schedule is um, three times a year. So we've had our two this year. I, I think you guys have seen Wave Twenty Two at this point. Have you yeah. seen that one? Okay. Uh, uh, I think so. The, the I actually got the last. Um, Steve, what was the martial art Pathfinder? Ruby Phoenix, Rise of the Ruby Phoenix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, that's the yeah. pre-painted one. That's, Those that's, were pre-painted. That's yeah. painted. That's pre-painted. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I don't think I've seen the latest unpainted. Okay. Which is so that should painted. be hitting you soon. I mean, that released in, I want to say July, here okay. in the United States. So. so it should be hitting our retailers fairly soon yeah if not already we we have a a local ish game store now um and i'm on their mailing list and it, they're usually quite good at we've got new minis So as you might be able to tell, I had already started on this particular uh, this particular troll. I like to get the base coat down early, so that I can, you know, actually focus on doing the shading and stuff. I mean, painting a base coat's nice and all, but you know, once you've seen one stream on how to do that, you kind of got it down. So I start early with these, so I can add shades and highlights, the interesting stuff, while I'm here with you guys. I also try to insert a few cat hairs into the uh, the miniature. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, that's that's totally intentional. Uh, no. Give it the uh, realistic, right? Exactly. Generating feel. Exactly. So, out of uh, Wave Two, Frameworks Wave Two, what has been your favorite mini so far? 
Ooh, wow. Pit Fiend. Could be, could be. Oh, the Fiend. Pit Fiend. I love that Pit Fiend. I've actually got it sitting here on my desk. Is that, uh, is that way too? No, that's three of three. Oh. Yeah. No, that's wave three. Yeah, wave two. I'm trying to it think. Be for any reason, whether it was easy to paint or the best looking pose or the best extras. I'm trying to think of what's in wave two. It's been a while since I've actually looked at it. <laughs> um, gosh, what was it? Well, I will say that uh, one of my favorites to paint so far has been the Pathfinder Goblins. Yeah. Yeah. Which are completely iconic. Um, in fact, we'll be painting those in a couple of weeks, actually. Oh, uh, awesome. With Craig. Yeah, you said you were going to be painting some Pathfinder stuff, so the Goblins are a really good choice. Yeah. So we're going to be painting. I'm going to give the Wizard a try. Um, so Dragon Skull Studios will be joining us. And we'll be painting uh, Pathfinder Frameworks. I'm starting to think that my power strip here is failing on me. It keeps shutting off my extra lights. Well, if it suddenly goes boom. <laughs> right? I think the next time it happens, I may just let them stay off, and we're going to have to suffer with a slightly darker image here. Let's turn it off again, too. Yeah, it's it's just powering these things off all by itself. Yeah. Lovely. I mean, but the GoPro camera's still working, so... Yeah, fingers crossed on that one. All right. I realize this is going to be slightly uh, dimmer than before. Get that sorted for the next time I come on the show, right? Always got to have some problem with my stuff, right? <laughs> it's become a thing now. It is. It's kind of my signature move. It's like, uh, I'm glad we recorded it, though, because it's like, well, how do I fix this if it, if it goes wrong? Right? Just watch it and go, oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he did. He got his friend over. Yeah. How you doing, OJ? You listening? He's actually got his headphones off right now. Oh, oh he's got a, he's got an earpiece in. I was going to say, you got a knock once for yes and twice for no. <laughs> That's like a... <laughs> he's got a little bit of a delay, so, you know. <laughs> See, that's what happens. When you reach pro level... You get your own engineer. <laughs> yeah, that's what started that. That was, it was I got the pro level on it. Like, here's your engineer. You don't have to worry about that stuff anymore. Yeah, no. That's more like, hey, when you get to a certain age and you're like, I don't know how to make this stuff work anymore. <laughs> Do I have to turn it to channel three first? I don't know. Was that, was, did you guys have that in Britain? In the US, that was like, Every video game console, you plugged it in and had to immediately switch it over to channel three on your television. Uh, you we have, I think it, I think for us it was, was it channel eight or channel seven, Steve? Uh, I can't remember what channel it was, but it was three was our TV, weren't it? So yeah, it was, we, we it only was, had three or four channels growing up, yeah. you know. So uh, you know, it's funny that everybody always you know jokes about that. You know, like, oh, you have BBC one, BBC two, blah blah blah, and you know, in the United States you would have this dial that had like 18 channels on it, but only three of them actually worked. Everything else was just static. Yeah. So, you know, we just made it seem like we had a lot more. When we had dials, it was the same thing. Yeah. And then when we had, when it switched to buttons, you had like 10 buttons or zero to nine. And uh, we still only had three or four channels. So I'm sure it was it was uh, channel eight for the the VHS, channel seven for the Atari, that kind of thing. There was an AV button, they weren't there. So I think for the video recorder, you just press the AV button. That's when we got really modern. 
did you have the little C clamp thing on the back that you had to attach, like like literally screw it onto the television? No, we had that would have a, that would have a switch on cables. it. No, I don't remember that. Yeah, see, that's I'm, I'm trying to tell you, I'm an old timer. <laughs> <laughs> My first video game console that I had at home played two or three different versions of Pong. Yep. And that was cutting edge, let me tell you. No, I, at least oh. I started with the uh, Atari with the stick and the orange button. <laughs> I remember those. A friend of mine had one of those. Um, so the time. ZX Spectrum, you had to get the uh, volume right on the tape recorder, otherwise your game wouldn't load. Right? Oh, I didn't see. OJ was, was is in chat. There he is. Look, boom. An amateur pro engineer. There we go. <laughs> Dragonborn says Mega Drive. Oh, oh was it Altered Beast on Mega Drive? Wasn't it? Altered Beast, R Type, Shinobi. Yeah, R Type, Shinobi. Yeah. Shinobi. Oh God, yeah. We wasted. God, what was it? We used to play Alex Kid in Monster World. That was a master system. Master system, yeah, yeah. Uh, Alex Kid, and there was something else, yeah. Um, great games. Yeah, Shinobi is something that I played in uh, arcades. Yeah, that stand up version of that. That was the thing there to suck away all of my quarters. They've done a remake of that recently. Yeah. Or it's coming. Yeah. No, they, 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 it was a PS5 free game, I think, a few months ago. A lot of nostalgia for some of those old games, but every time I try them again after, you know, having been away for so long, <laughs> it's so disappointing. <laughs> Yeah, the the one I get nostalgia for is um, Knights of the Old Republic. Oh yeah, and that's not that old a game, but it's no. something that I would definitely go and play again. I yeah. think that was something that it was such a good because we had role playing games, but they were most of them were all fantasy. It was very yeah. rare you had such a good sci fi and a script that actually worked. Because it wasn't until after that um, you had Mass Effect, right? Yeah, there was the same level of of you know immersion in a in a sci-fi game. Yeah, storytelling. Because I, you know, I was playing Baldur's Gate three the other day, and I noticed that I have got installed on my laptop Knights of the Old Republic. <laughs> I, I yeah. screwed myself. I remember. I still remember now, right? I screwed myself over so bad in that game because I I I'd gone heavy on rogue type class with my main character, and then all my heels were in the other Jedi that's in your team. That in the second to last room betrays you and buggers off. So I go into the last fight against the boss and i've got no healing in my party other than <laughs> the hill kits that you've got right never yeah so cheated <laughs> <laughs> i um i didn't start playing that one right away and uh i had a friend uh just somebody i knew from online that um i would occasionally chat with uh and uh he ruined the game for me he's totally spoiled it um oh no uh, basically by telling me what you just told me. <laughs> um, but this was back when I was actually still playing the game. Right. You know, he had finished it. He had it for a while, and he finished it up, and he was like, oh, yeah, you know, he betrays you at the end. And I'm like, ah, okay, guess I don't need to finish this game. <laughs> and to this day, I have not. Really? Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I was kind of waiting for the day when, you know, I would just no longer remember about that. But thanks for bringing it up again. No. <laughs> 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 
All right, so I'm going to attempt to build one of these live so we can see how easy it is to build or how easy it is for me. No. I'll be interested to see what you think is the uh, the difficulty rating for assembling that because, you know, we we put those on the back of the box so that people would have an idea. And I'm curious if we got it right for somebody who is a self-professed beginning painter. Mm-hmm. All right, here we go. IKEA instructions. <laughs> it's not that bad. Plug one A into one B. Here we go. No, not actually. It is. Um, what's what's been the uh, feedback of these instructions? Because the, the the packets are actually small, so the instructions are folded up and printed. Uh, you know, printed um, on mass. But you do have on the whoops on the back of every box. You do have a QR code. Mm -hmm. um, so the feedback on the instructions, uh, I haven't really seen a lot of comments about it. Um, I think that most people are able to figure it out pretty easily. Um, you know, I mean, you could probably just start plugging pieces together there and never actually look at the instructions. Um, yeah. But again, you know, the gargoyle is one of the easier models to build. Uh, some of them get quite complex, and as you know, you start running into clear parts. Like uh, I know the night hag was especially difficult. Um, uh, that's when you start running into. I'm not sure where this goes or why. <laughs> it, the, the tiefling warlock I found yeah. the hardest with the uh, the whole spell effects. If you wanted to put all of that together, yes. I actually uh, painted that tiefling warlock. Uh, sans spell effects uh, for the Ravenloft campaign that David is running. That is my character. He is a tiefling sorcerer warlock. Oh, cool. cool. I, I, I use that for my character in our... Um... What's the circus one, Dave? Uh, which... which well, Beyond the Witch Light. Yeah. 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 Which, plug, 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 if you buy it from our friends at Beedling Grimm, uh, you'll find our names in the back. <laughs> nice. So we helped him with that one. Trying to really get in here and do all these muscle striations. I'm going to try because, but the, uh, another good thing about um, these frameworks is you get different poses. So in this particular one, so this is one of the yellow boxes, um, you get two miniatures, which means you get two different poses you can do. Yes. Indeed. So when you look at the instructions, you that's where you start. Number one, we <laughs> start number one. But then you can go down here, or you can go down here. You don't, you don't follow it. All the instructions. You pick, pick, pick which pose you do. Now the benefit of having two minis in one box is you can have both poses. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to get that. There you go. Yeah, that was a piece of feedback that we got early on. Um, you know, uh, more parts, more minis, and so you know, we just realized. If the box will hold more than one, let's see yeah. what we can jam in there. So, was there was there any um, since since Wave Two has launched, and we're talking about Wave Three, has um, were any kind of lessons learned? Were any further improvements made since Wave Two? Yep. So, going into Wave Three, did you go oh, okay? Let's try this now. We can experiment a little bit more and. Um, I think you'll find wave three is going to be very similar to wave two. Um, yeah. we might make a few adjustments to the packaging. Uh, that was one of the big adjustments we would made between wave one and wave two. Um, and we might further refine that a bit, but, um, 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, I feel like um, I feel like we moved definitely in the right direction by having <laughs> eighteen customizable goblins in the uh, the goblin multi pack. Um, yep. And I am definitely planning to proceed, you know, continue doing that sort of thing with uh, further waves, especially for those little guys. You know, that, that fit a lot of those in there. Yeah. You wait. You always need more. So it, it does work. It's not enough goblins in this world. So I've got another question for the frameworks. With um, with wave one, we had D and D. With wave two, we've got D and D and Pathfinder. Are we going to see a, a new partnership with uh, anyone else? Well, we do have a, uh, a license with Critical Role, so uh, oh, so you've already seen those. Now, Dory frameworks. Yeah, I mean, you've seen those already in Wave Two, right? It's the uh, the. Um, I saw them on the list, but I think I didn't get any. You didn't get any. Oh, I, I, mean, I didn't get any. Oh man. Uh, we got we got D and D and Pathfinder. Yeah, we had uh, we had a really nice uh, um, gravity wizard, graviturgy wizard. Yeah, uh, that we were working on, um, and for one reason or another, we we pulled that from Wave Two at the last minute. Um, and I'm really trying to figure out a way to make that one work and get it back into uh, to the next wave. So yeah, I've uh, I've gone back over this guy here with some uh, some sick green paint yep. from the D and D prismatic paint line, and added in a little bit of Displacer Beast, um, which is actually no, it's Displacer Fle uh, Beast flesh is the lighter blue. I've added in the Black Pudding, which is a really dark blue, almost almost black, um, and uh, it's given me I think an interesting tone here. It's not really like, nice. Let's let me bring it up on the screen so we can see it in a bigger format. Hi everyone, there's me. <laughs> um, let's look at a real troll. There we go. Yeah, so you can see you know, I've got a very light color around the face here, but then I've started adding in and you've got like a kind of a bluish tone. Yeah. yeah. Going through the muscles here. And then you know, when I finish doing all this highlighting, I can go back over this. Uh and it, assuming I don't do a shade, uh, I may do a shade and then do this but um what i like to do with these is after i've done all the highlighting and added all the shades i want i go back over with the starting color which in this case is going to be that sick green yeah um, and just kind of do a wash to pull it all together so it, you know the 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 highlights aren't so abrupt yeah yeah you know, so harsh well, i was just going to ask you there the um the paints that you've got what, what paints are those or those the test paints from prismatics those are test paints from prismatic yeah that's exactly the same colors you would get if you were to grab a bottle of prismatic paint at your favorite local game store so everyone is joining us again if you have any questions you'd like to ask jd um, about his painting or whiz kids or frameworks or if you want to ask anyone else questions do shout out don't be shy yeah, some of my coworkers said they were going to stop in and have a look, but uh, you know, I haven't seen any questions from them yet. But if you are a coworker of JD, <laughs> let us know all the dirty little in-house secrets, um, so that we can blackmail them and get some more info on frameworks. <laughs> I don't think that's how that works. <laughs> <laughs> it should be though. It should. <laughs> it should be how it works. Listen to you, social engineering there. 
So let's have, a, let's have another check. So this is this is the miniature miniature that uh, JD is working on. This is the Frameworks troll. This is the render. Um, you can't see the third arm on uh, on the render, but yeah, that's a different arm. It's it's a different set. If uh, let's see if we can get yeah, oh, yeah, there it is. You can just about see it on the arm that's going to the ground. Oh, oh it's like sticking up. It's, it's no. Ugh. It's a mutant troll. Well, the troll actually in chat it? earlier said it was Deadpool's baby hand. Oh, it's Deadpool's <laughs> baby. Somebody's saying I need Deadpool's baby hand for these goblins. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's one way to do it. Let's switch it back. Steve, how are you getting on? We haven't, we haven't spoken to you yet. Look. Uh, I'm painting the white tunic. We're only half hour in. I thought it was like nearly wrapping up time. Uh, that's not going to focus at all, is it? So, Steve, I got a question for you. You went with the uh, the non hooded version of the uh, the Medusa there. What uh, what did. went into your reasoning? Because I wanted well, to I mean, paint the snakes. You wanted to paint the snakes. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I, I, I wanted it instantly recognizable as as, back uh, on as screen, Medusa. <laughs> <laughs> You're focus. on camera, man. You're on camera. That behind it, yes, yeah, Steve. Just... We're live. I don't know if anybody's mentioned that. <laughs> Bear with me when I find the software <laughs> that runs my phone, Robocop. <laughs> you have Come 10 on, seconds Steve. to comply. <laughs> <laughs> right. You now have eight seconds to comply. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Wow, look at that. Okay. So yeah, you now I'm, have five I'm, seconds to comply. I'm trying to layer up uh, the the white tunic. Obviously, the camera light blows it out completely, so you can't see the definition. But it is there. I can see it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, nice. I'm I'm quite excited so about the, the skin color. Yeah. Steve, tell us about the the Medusa's head. Is that two halves? Is that one whole? What is that? Um. Yeah, <laughs> I can't remember. Uh, it is. It is all one piece, I think. Yeah, it's all one piece. On that one, it, and you just glued it into the neck. So it's that was that was one piece, from what I recall. I didn't have to assemble that. Oh. I think on the hood one, you do have to assemble. Yeah, the hooded one, the hooded man. <laughs> um, Steve. Yes, Steve. OJ <laughs> is after your job, and he's doing a better job than you are. Look, he's already picked up a question, uh, so I found the original question. But uh, so Dragonborn Industries asks: Has there been any talks with Pizzo about Starfinder Second Edition miniatures? Now, is that Wizkids as a whole, or is that Frameworks? Uh... JD, over to you. <laughs> Well, yeah, we have obviously talked to uh, all of our licensors about all their products, all their uh, product lines. Uh, so, yes, there have been talks, um, and I am right there with you. I'd love to do a set of uh, the Pathfinder Space Goblins with those little clear helmets. I think, oh, uh, no. Dragonborn, I think you and I have talked about that before, actually. <laughs> they are so, so good. But, uh, you know, uh, we Still will see what happen. happens. Holidays are coming. Holidays are coming. <laughs> what do what what do um, whiz kids do to celebrate the winter holidays? Holiday season. Do you have a big staff party? <laughs> uh, there might be there might be one up? in the New Jersey office. I am not at oh. the New Jersey office, so uh, yeah, we're kind of scattered across the country. We got people in South Carolina, uh, North Carolina, North Carolina. Uh, Seattle, where I'm at, uh, New Jersey, where the main office is, yep. and uh, we've got uh, some sculptors and layout people uh, in Tennessee. So, uh, if there is a big staff party, you know, apparently I'm not invited because it's too far away or something. I, I guess. You might have to dial dial in. 
I think that seems to be the, uh, the go-to at the moment. Yeah, I don't mind. I mean, I have moved across this country four times for different jobs. Uh, wow. It gets a little tiring, you know, and having somebody say, you know what, you can just work from home. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. We have uh, Miss Rage, Rajaya, Miss Rage, oh Miss Rage a lot. Here we go. It's me and bad names again, Miss Rage a lot. This is JD is the goat. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what that means, but I'll shout it out anyway. Hopefully, it's something nice. <laughs> well, uh, it, it's the greatest really of all. All, all, all time. It's great. Oh, greatest of all time. Oh, of course it is. Yeah, I, I Mothman say says hi. <laughs> who who said hi? Mothman. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's that's one there of my co-workers, go. I think. So, Miss <laughs> Rage a lot. Telling Mothman says hi. <laughs> yeah, that's one of my co-workers. So uh, yeah, apparently she's letting us know that uh, I, I missed a place because she's located in uh, West Virginia, home of the Mothman. Oh, gotcha. So, is there, um, uh, have you yourself been able to get to any conventions this year? I have not, um, and I'm not too terribly upset by that. The more I, you know, see other people coming back from conventions and saying, "Oh." It's just positive for COVID. Still so getting sick. Yep. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if I've mentioned, uh, my wife works at the local hospital, and so she sees the the data on that, and apparently the, uh, the hospitalizations are increasing again. Yes. Yeah. Right same, no. same, same in this country as well. So um, they're telling people, vulnerable people, to go and get the, uh, the flu jab early. Yeah. Because of the new variant. Yeah, one of my friends just got it again. It actually, uh, last year, uh, or earlier this year, I guess, brought uh, OJ's Ravenloft campaign kind of a screeching halt because three of the the five players in the game, including him, got, uh, got it all at the same time, and then they spread oh. it to one of the remaining people, and yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we had a we had a long hiatus there. He's over there crying quietly. <laughs> Does OJ um, DM that? Game? OJ DMs that game. Yes. OJ is a Forgotten Realms fan from way way back, and uh, you know he started us off in the realms, and you know. We have, we have seen the, I think it's called the Death House. Yeah. At this point. Always a classic. Hmm. So Twitchy and Twitchy is asking, what are we painting tonight? We are painting loads of things tonight. I am painting not one, but two. Well, I am painting one gargoyle. gargoyle. I'm making a gargoyle. Steve is painting up a Medusa. And JD is painting up a troll, which looks like that. A mutated troll, no less. A mutated troll. It's a nice chilled. Chill, chill, chill. Uh, we have, it, it's quite interesting because um, we've got, I can hear it. I don't know if the audience can hear it, but we've got birds chirping, the stream running. Yeah, I can hear that. It's quite calm, actually. It's quite nice. It's like being outside. What's the weather been like where you are, JD? Because we've we've just come out the other side of a heat wave again. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, it's uh, it's time to dig out the old DMG first edition random weather tables for Seattle. Uh, <laughs> it, yeah, I mean, you know, one day it'll be very very warm, and you know, working in my in my shorts and a tank top, and you know. The next morning, I'm like, it's so cold. Why is it so cold? 
<laughs> when I grew up uh, in Indiana back in the 70s and 80s, uh, a popular expression was, oh, don't like the weather in Indiana? That's okay. Wait a day or two. It'll change. Um, but I think that's true of every place. I think people, I've heard people say that everywhere. I noticed that you Brits aren't saying anything about that expression in uh, the UK, so I'll assume that I'm it's, wrong. Uh, no, no, we, we have four, <laughs> se four seasons in one day. Four seasons yeah. in one day, there you go. That's the way to do it, get it all out of the way. Start each day fresh. Whether in Washington State is the same as here, isn't it? You get what, five meters of rainfall a year or something. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I remember I visited the UK back in uh, 1995, I want to say. Um, and uh, I was asking everybody, you know, what kind of clothes should I wear? What kind of you know, weather am I going to expect? And uh, they were like, yeah, it's pretty much the same as you get in Seattle. So dress for Seattle yeah yeah all right I so I really haven't highlighted this arm very much have I all right time to get in there so uh, OJ is chatting away. <laughs> He's a chatty chatting. guy. <laughs> yeah. So he said, I'm a huge uh, Forgotten Realms fan. Yeah, so so are we. I uh, absolutely love Forgotten Realms. Um, um, also a big fan of Dragon Lance. So uh, yeah, it, absolutely love it. We're currently playing so we're currently playing Dragon Lance, the Steel Edition from Beetle and Grimms. Uh, we're also mm -hmm. playing the Platinum Edition of Beetle and Grimms, Frost Maiden. We've just we're just about to start uh, the last chapter before we, and then we'll we'll finish that before the end of the year. And we'll start a new campaign. Um, we're playing Curse of Strahd, um, and we have some uh, new projects lined up as well, which might start before the end of the year. Um, but we're gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start mixing things up a bit. I'm gonna just go back to some really good stories that I liked, and maybe we'll, we'll introduce some third or fourth edition stories because um some oldies but goodies yeah and we always have space for guest players <laughs> one of these days i'm going to take you up on that it's a question of actually being available on the you know a saturday uh, it is that's, that's a difficult thing i mean for us it's just the evening uh but yeah for, for you guys in the states it's you don't want to give up your saturday afternoons I do. I want to join. I want to. I want to play in your game. <laughs> well, again, the, the the best thing about the guest player spot is you come on for one episode, and you can be a goodie or a baddie, and you just you know you help out or you kill the players. It's great. Or you can be um, you can be not a regular character, but uh, bring an NPC to life, so that any time that that NPC is required by the players that you just jump on on the stream and you play you still play it just means you get more than one appearance ah. so not and then you have the full full-time player option that if you can spare that time <laughs> yeah you it's, uh, join us. it's it's the whole being able to regularly join that uh you yes. know becomes an issue my uh, my wife and i do a well, we try to do a monthly sometimes it ends up being bi-monthly uh game day just have people over and play board games yep um, and that's on a saturday big surprise and then of course you know my wife runs a pathfinder campaign oj runs that uh ravenloft game yeah, and those are both on. Guess what? Saturdays. 
<laughs> it's almost like that's a popular day of the week to run RPG campaign sessions. I don't, I don't really understand that, but you know. Well, OJ, OJ in chat is talking about epic levels. Yeah, I, I, oh, I loved epic levels. Is it, <laughs> it third or fourth? And you can go up to thirtieth level. Third. It was great. I love those. I think it was 20th, though, wasn't it? 30 plus. 30 plus? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I never actually did that. I did some playtesting for the Epic Level Handbook. Because I was still a Wizards in RPG R&D at the time. Yeah, we, uh, we got invited to uh, kind of try to break the make-your-own-spell system. Yeah. Um, and uh, I don't know that I particularly broke the spell system. I don't know that I, you know, that I understood the assignment, as it were. But um, I did create a spell on the fly that was about, you know, an eighth or ninth level for a wizard that would... Um, literally convert uh, an enemy into solid platinum. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I think we totaled that one up at, at level eight because it, you know I mean you can do that with a wish so it really doesn't qualify as a level nine. Yeah. Steve, did we lose your, your picture there? Oh I've got okay. Steve, are you being attacked by a like a swamp creature? What's going on? Uh, I've got to get paint. Oh, okay. I've got... <laughs> your microphone is apparently a little too far away from your system. It's cutting out. So we're just getting the... Steve has turned into a Klingon. It's, it's where... It's, we're, we're, we're laughing. I've got, I've got out of Bluetooth range. <laughs> I was yeah. going to say, Steve's actually on his chair being strangled to death. <laughs> right, I'm going to get paint. I will be back in a minute. There we go. That's a high price to pay for paint. So, you know, I do keep thinking about uh, trying to make my way into a session that you're running at some point. Just finding time to be available and then, you know, making plans ahead yeah. of time. Way back in the day, my uh, my go-to playtest character for third edition when we were playtesting the monster manual was a half-orc barbarian named Kromach. Oh, nice. Uh, so you could be... bring him back as a cameo. Yeah. I'd love to convert him to fifth. We have um, some of our guest players in the past because everyone has, like, these particular favorite characters they have. Oh, absolutely. And I've always said to people, just rather than generate a, a new character, just bring someone you know how to play, and you cross the streams. Just bring them in, have some yeah. fun. Um, it's only you know if it's if it's a guest appearance, it's, it's for one episode. It's only a couple of hours. Just do it. And it's great. Yeah, it uh, it'll be a little bit of an experience. There will be some how to play. Uh, that um i'm gonna have to work on because you know last time i played him was 3.5 uh so you know the rules have changed a little bit i understand yeah you roll high you succeed you roll <laughs> low you fail <laughs> those are my rules oh wait i thought it was the other way around oh i'm thinking of first edition <laughs> yeah that okay yeah that card. The, um, Help me understand negative numbers. <laughs> <laughs> what has been... So here's, here's a question for JD and OJ. What has been your... What's been a campaign you've wanted to play as a player or run as a DM, but you've never done it? Any any edition? Of D&D &D specifically? Uh, well, yeah, you can go outside of D and D, uh, or do one D and D and do one uh, other system. Oh, sure. Um, I'm 
trying to think back. I really wanted to do the Undermountain campaign. But that was like way back in first edition, if I recall correctly. Well, you had two parts, didn't you? You can, it, Yeah. They did the first few levels, then they came back. In the, I think it was another edition, and they did it, the lower levels. Yeah. Did you did you ever pick up um, the Mad Maid from 5th edition? No, 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 no. I did not. It, that has every level in the single book oh it's slightly more fleshed out but it from those original editions it is changed it, de it depends Where, would you want to play the original just for the original sake no or is it going back <laughs> to the, the under mountain <laughs> no i uh, uh you know back when D D had that old system you know that, that's what you played um, you know, but I think they they improved on it uh, at least with third edition, and I think that you know I didn't play much of second edition. It was kind of you know I was playing a lot of champions back then, and so you know yeah. I, it was kind of hard to get people to go back to playing D and D. But um, you know, third edition came out, and I feel like third edition like you know really polished up all the stuff that was clunky about first and second edition. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, I doubt that I would play it in uh, the original form. It's got to be much much better in, in fifth edition rules. You know, no offense to the to the guys who you know worked on that. It's just I the think system the, that we uh, worked with. I, I much prefer the artwork from fifth edition. There's a lot. There's a lot more there. Um, I think it's really refined, isn't it? Yeah. And then the new, I mean, we, we were talking about right at the start, we mentioned the, the, the new D&D &D when that comes out. 25? Or is it coming out in 24? I don't know. But um, they, they've already shared some of the new art material. And the new artist, whoever it is, is stunning. Some of that artwork I've been seeing is absolutely stunning. We Was have another question. Else? And, oh. Well, I don't know. At least it, it looks. Um, I hope it's not AI. <laughs> it <laughs> stunning. It really does. Some of the some of the preview art I've seen. And uh, next question we have from Dragon Skull Studios. Uh, will the three coal bowls in a trench coat be available to purchase online? Because he he missed it the day he was at Gen Con. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I didn't get one either. If that makes you feel any better. Um, <laughs> uh, I, uh, I I don't know. Um, I think it was designed as a promo. So, you know, if it was designed as a convention exclusive, uh, sorry. Um, but actually, there's an interesting question. I mean, it, it kind of brings this around to, to me asking everybody in the chat room and you guys a question. Um, what kind of promos would you like to see? Like, you know, what Ooh. kind of stuff would you like to see? Like, if... Uh, let's let's talk specifically like frameworks and and UPM. So Nolzers, you know, deep cuts, all that stuff. You know, if we were going to do promos for the unpainted miniature lines, what would you like to see? Stuff that would be like you know convention or online exclusives. Uh, free badges in a trench coat. Um, free badges in a trench coat. Let me write that down. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think that the latest. The, the Dragonlance promos were great. Mm -hmm. uh, you had Lord Soft. I wasn't worried about the Kenda. Uh, you had Lord Soft and you had something else. Um, I can't remember what the other one was. Oh, uh, Takesis. Yeah, yeah. Uh, stunning. Pre-painted, little black box. Great. Decorative. Everything. Um, great for teasing things. Absolutely loved it. I, I would like to see more of that kind of thing for maybe maybe one box from each of those new releases that year. Uh-huh. If that if that's a thing. Um so what we've got? We've got the new Fandelva, Fan Fandalen. Fandelva. Um, that one. <laughs> the Shadow um, Obelisk. Yes, yeah, so we yeah. got new what yeah. else did we get this year? Space Jam. Got... Yeah. I know it's not um, Space Jam, it's Spill Jammer. Yeah, it's Spill Jammer. <laughs> <laughs> had... I'm like, something's wrong about that name. Space Jam was a movie. I don't know what are you talking about. <laughs> He's a big fan of Space Jam 2, aren't you, Steve? No. Okay. 
the original with Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, got, I, know, um, I, I like LeBron, but you can't beat the, uh, the original. You can't beat Jordan. You got um, Big B's, the Giants. Mm -hmm. It's a source book, but uh, I I got to see at UK Games Expo. We saw the uh, the the Whiskers Giants from that. They were stunning. Really, really. <sighs> Oh yeah, yeah, they were nice looking minis. They were, um, so they were really cool. I would like to see a promo of that. What What I would like to see is the use of the more martial weapons on like some of the fighter minis. So like, the 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 trident, spike shields, pole arms. That so you're gonna you can stage. Have. You're going to stage mini gladiatorial games, is what I'm hearing. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like gladiator figures and that sort of stuff. Because some of the some of the fighters I play are, you know, a bit more. They don't use long sword and shield all the time. Although right. Apparently, the fighter I'm playing is using long sword and shield. <laughs> <laughs> Why mess with what works? We you talking about York. Steve. Yeah, York. That's only because that's only because of uh, needs must and stuff. Yeah, he, he's he's a knight. He's a knight on a particular journey. I should paint. I should paint a mini for you, all, actually. One of the things I actually find uh, a tiny bit disappointing about Dungeons and Dragons, um, and I haven't actually played a fighter in Fifth Edition yet, so I, I can't. I can't, you know, confirm that this is actually still the case, but it used to be that, you know, you would design your character and you would have a, a specific kind of goal in mind. Like, you know, this guy's going to be really amazing with a two-handed sword. And then, you know, early in the game, you, you would encounter like maybe a masterwork two-handed sword. You know, you can buy one if yeah. you didn't like find one, but you rarely encountered like a magic item that matched the proficiencies you had set up. You know, so you would encounter like, hey, I found a really nice plus one axe and a really nice plus two shield. That'd be a great combination. I'm the only one in a group that can use it. But I've just wasted one of my feats. Yeah. 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 See, I'm sure there's a lot of opportunities I missed out on because I was like, no, no, I'm going to hold out for that plus two great sword. What, what's your JD? What's your most favourite character of all time? Is it, uh, and and what rule set is it? D and D or is it Pathfinder? Oh, oh golly, oh my gosh, that's <laughs> you're asking. What's, a, what's a the guy one you who's have been the gaming most... for forty odd years? What his favourite character is? <laughs> I really enjoyed playing Chromoc. I You know, I, I enjoyed him so much that when you know I started. Uh, started the game mechanics we uh, we wrote a book about goblinoids written from chromox perspective um <laughs> cool <laughs> uh Cromach, though is not to put too fine a point on it a bit of an asshole um <laughs> you definitely have to appear in one of my games <laughs> <laughs> you'll fit right in they'll be fine he's not a villain as it were he just you know he just yeah. doesn't feel strongly that you know good and evil are important concepts um, he is true neutral, uh, and um, yeah, you know, monsters got to eat too, right? Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, so Cromock was a character I played for a really long time during the playtesting sessions, and I kept him around for you know for fun. Um, but man, so many other games that I've played, it's you know, it's hard to say. Like, uh, you know, I. I I'm sure I had a favorite character that I played in Champions games all the time, although at this point I couldn't tell you who that was or what he was like. Um, mm -hmm. uh, wow. <laughs> I've got one. I don't know that anybody who would actually recognize this uh, would would actually be watching the stream, but um, we played the, the Feng Shui role-playing game quite a bit uh, when I was uh, in Wizards customer service. And um, I invented an NPC that uh, another guy ran a campaign, and he was like, dude, you need to play that NPC as your character for this. Um, and his name was Iron Man Ma. 
I think I just lost my camera. Oh yeah, it just yeah. flashed a message up there and said your camera's too hot. So yeah, now we're going to be painting up here again, like I said earlier. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, Iron Man Ma was quite a character. He was uh, he was this ridiculously buff, hard to defeat guy because he could just take any hit, and he loved yeah. taking hits on his forehead. Um, <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I would, uh, I would just, you know, like stand in the front of the group and let the enemies hit me and wear themselves out. And then I would just beat them to death with my shoe or whatever, you know? And so, but, uh, yeah, he would, <laughs> I based him on Curly Joe from, uh, the three stooges. So he would get, <laughs> he would get into a fight situation and somebody would hit him a few times and he would just stand there and scowl at them, you know, oh, you know, and then. Finally, they would like do a little damage, and he would go. <laughs> <laughs> and then charge in. I tend to play real ridiculous characters. I think I think most people do. Um, it, 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 there's a the whole it part part of escapism is it, there's a there's a, a part of you in that character yeah back in the day when i was playing champions ah, i created an npc superhero group and uh i based each of the members of the group on uh what i considered one of my either strengths or weaknesses or aspects of my personality um so you know yeah, there was a lot of me in that superhero group. Mm. You know, and this was when I was very young and a lot more athletic, so there was a young athletic type in there. <laughs> um, uh, a slightly crazy guy. Uh, uh, do you remember um, the movie Tommy? The Who? No. Wow. Steve, do you? The Pimple Wizard. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, there's a there's a character in there named Cousin Kevin. I don't know if you remember that one at all, but I, yeah, I, Cousin I Kevin. Do. Was... I, don't re I remember the film. I don't. The yeah, yeah. It was a big part of my uh, you know my youth. Uh, everybody was really into it because I think I think it came out when I was eight, nine, something like that. So right. You know, all my friends were into the Who all of a sudden, and we spent a lot of time listening to that album and singing along because we were kids and didn't think we sung badly. So, but yeah, I, I, I tend to uh, build myself or, or some aspect of myself into virtually every character I play. I think it's pretty normal, like you said. I think everybody does that. Yeah, there's, there's something in them that... Uh... You may not even Which consciously realize it, but there's definitely always yeah. part of you in a character. Yeah, it's kind of hard to play against type, even yeah. when you're like, "Hey, I'm true neutral. I don't, I don't take crap from everybody. I, I don't mind whatever people do as long as they don't hurt me." And then somebody's like, "Oh, well, we're gonna sell these orphans into slavery," and you're like, "Okay, stop. <laughs> I got something to say about that." We've got um, when cameras moved. This is the second gargoyle. Oh, nice. So, a slightly different pose to the other one. So, this is the one that's, that's, that's drying up at the moment. I've done a second coat on him. But he's got the uh, na 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 pose. This time now. <laughs> nanny nanny boo boo. And this one. He's got his arm onto the ground. And one arm up. Ready to claw your face off. Which I like. And, and different set of wings as well. So, they there is a ton of variety in these boxes. Yes, there is. So you just built the new one. What, what's your impression of the, the difficulty level? Do you think we nailed it? What's it say on the back uh, of the box? Yeah, I mean, on, on the box, I'm sure it says easy. Oh, I just dropped it. I'm sure it says easy. <laughs> uh, there you go. So beginner level. And yes, you're a beginner painter. Perfect. I think that was... And there's still a ton of extras in there. So there is... Um, you can see here that we've got some weapons, you've got a backpack, 
there is a broken i think it's a broken gargoyle there's a sword um, yeah a yeah it's a, it's a broken inspection. actual gargoyle yeah because you know if you're gonna blend in and make people think that you're just a stone statue you get rid of that existing stone statue and everybody's like was that guy thinner before yeah so there you go four sprues you still see so i've still got two more sets of wings yeah and if if i had another body i could use that but the best thing about these things um especially if people were into warhammer and everything else the amount of extra leftover pieces people have you could attach it to something else you can build it into something else you, uh, can, base it. Of, you, could, you could get some yeah. rocks some cork rocks and stick the wing in the pile of rocks and like it's fallen down and shattered yeah. or something it makes some scenery out of it yeah and that backpack yeah. that you pointed out that's a that's a climber's pack specifically um yeah. that's from the guy who uh, you know decided to climb up there and see what happened to the old gargoyle statue that used to be there trying yeah. to tell a story with all those extra bits yeah very very nice Uh, there's a question. Yeah, I will try and put it up. No, I clicked the wrong one. Ignore that one. <laughs> can, can you pose the hands to cover the face? <laughs> so like uh, like an angel of some kind? Like an angel that appears to be weeping, perhaps? Yeah, Yeah, that's the one. Well, I was going with the see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil, but uh, oh, yeah. let's go straight for Doctor Who. Yeah, you know that's the that's the thing about these. If you've got some experience in in doing kit bashing and you've you've done some modifications of your minis before, it's not difficult at all to you know cut bits off and reposition things and all that sort of lovely stuff. So I'm sure that you know. You could repose those hands and get those up there. Yeah. I may have to do that just to mess with him. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, just to while it's going on, uh, Dragon Skull Studios. Um, thank you. Uh, it has arrived. They sent me a nice little gift. So Dragon Skull Studios, I mentioned on, on one episode, we were doing the brush off and I mentioned uh, the, the paint I was using had got clogged and, and I never had a needle around or anything like a sharp pin to, uh, to ungunk it. And Dragon Skull Studios sent me one of these. It's a dropper, tip, dropper tip tool from Reaper. And you can see, look, it's got a skull on there. Yeah. Why not? Cool. And you've even got a safe, safety cork. I think I was listening in the day you uh, you asked about that. Yeah, yeah. I've got this. Oh, let me get it over here. I got this thing. This is a this is just a cork. It's got the yep. needle that I use. Got a bigger needle for uh, opening up like super glue bottles. Yeah, and then I put a toothpick in there, broke it off, and that's the holder for my brush cap. Yeah, and then I drop it on the floor because that's where it belongs. I'll be right back. <laughs> Hello, everybody. For my coworkers that are watching, I don't know if it's just the one or, or if there's more than one, but they're probably kind of uh, amazed that I'm doing this because normally when I'm you know doing uh, meetings, uh, I turn off my camera. <laughs> <laughs> they almost never actually see what I look like. It's just because you like us more than them, isn't it? I wasn't going to go there, but, you know, <laughs> if you insist on bringing it up, I suppose we could argue uh, yeah, that yeah, point. Yeah. You, you've just been taken off the Christmas card list and stuff like that now. Right? <laughs> Thanks for bringing it up. No more Christmas cookies for JD. Yeah. All right. This is a darker thing. Uh, is this one? So we have, uh, if you have more questions for JD about WizKids, about painting, about miniatures, 
Uh, do shout it out. We've got a little bit more time here. Um, we got some. I can actually we can talk you through. Let's bring up. Um, dun, dun, dun. If it's a it's server, been a while. I'm going to be very disappointed. No, it's fine. We, <laughs> it's been a while since we talked about Wave Two. Um, can you tell us a little kind of fun fact about each one as we bring up on screen? This is the fire Ooh, giant. Yeah. yeah, yeah, hang on, hang Go on. For on. It. I'm rinse the paint out of my brush there real quick. Uh, yeah, the fire giant. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Um, the, that was one of Tom Bebby's concepts. Yeah. Uh, I think pretty much all the frameworks uh, stuff there was Tom Bebby concepts. But um, yeah, he had the idea of introducing that, uh, adding that hellhound on a leash. And that hellhound... That is worth the price of admission. Well, maybe not, but you know, it's that is definitely a huge selling point for the the fire giant miniature. Mm -hmm. um, it just looks so nice, um, and yeah, I, I would have to say that's what I was searching for earlier. That's the giant type that I was trying to remember, and I couldn't quite summon it to mind. That one is, I think, my favorite from the from the wave. Um, cool. It's just badass. Can't wait. It's to so cool. It is that so down on the so table. Cool. <laughs> And uh, we, we had the Vrock as well. Yeah, yeah. You painted that with uh, Kelly, as I recall. Yep. Yeah, there's yeah. the Vrock right nearby. Yeah, so uh, this one, I I remember, uh, I have never... I The early Vrocks that Wizards put out way back in the day, the little plastic pre-painted ones they had, they were okay, but man, their pose was just not conducive to you know packaging they would just like curl mm -hmm. over and fall over every chance they got so yeah i was actually really eager to get a, a rock into uh, frameworks because the rigid plastic makes it stand up much better now i know that whiz kids had already done rocks and they they are great they're fine um but yeah it's just been one that i've always been like i want to do a rock that is kind of menacing and also you know really conveys that kind of bird of prey feel to it and i think that, that yeah. tom really captured that with this it's a it's a it's a great again it's a great step. Well, we'll look at the renders after we look at the boxes. Now we're doing the troll, so we're going to skip that one because that's what we're focused on today. Yeah, that's actually the first time I've seen that one. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> We've got the gargoyle comes in too. Uh, yeah, and the then the troll, troll again. The troll is yeah. also a yellow box, but only comes only has the one mini because it's a large mini. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's what we consider uh, a, a fat pack. Yeah. And then the gargoyle, you get two medium-sized gargoyles in there with different different poses. Right. Plus some extras. And we've got the Goliath Barbarian. Now, this one was... It's it's awesome. You, you It comes with a, a massive hammer, all the, the horned pieces, which uh -huh. you can put across the chest or the head. Uh -huh. um, but you've got giant... Is it giant rune inscribed in the hammer? Yeah. Yep. It is gorgeous. Yeah, that's a nice one. And of course, you know, I, <laughs> I added that one to the set list while I was watching Critical Role, so big surprise there. <laughs> <laughs> Box we, we, we've got a Half Elf Ranger. Yeah, that was actually one of the first ones um, that we did for Wave 2. I think that was actually like we had, we had just finished up the set list for Wave 1. And uh, I think Tom brought me that sketch. Like that was one of the first ones he did for Wave Two. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we just we we were like, you know, we kind of have a uh, kind of have our Elf Ranger, our <clears throat> or the D word. I can't think of what that is, but I'm sure that it'll come out of mind. Uh, yeah, there that. Is. Yeah, that was on. Uh, yeah. So we had that one, and I was like, you know, let's let's give him a a, a little less iconic half Elf Ranger. Um, and this was also one of the first ones that we started adding additional parts to. Um, I think it was one of the first ones that we uh, started looking around and finding different heads to pose with, and yeah, change. This the... one has a lot of options, actually. It does. It does. does. Tons. We have the halfling rogue. <laughs> yeah, oh, I love the halfling rogue. I love the halfling rogue. It's uh, uh, again, Tom. You know, had the idea of like putting a map in his hand, um, or a treasure map. I guess it would be. Um, but I, I love that. It just it's perfect, and him holding the, the lantern like that. Um, yeah, some of the some of the bits on this were a little outsized, though. I think I, I think 
I kind of underestimated or overestimated, you know, uh, how big the halfling was going to be. But that treasure pile that he can have is supposed to just be something. It's like, oh, there's a, there it is on the base. But no, it, that that's kind of a, a base unto itself. But I mean, it's fine. He looks good on that. It, it, it's a it's a fantastic. Uh, I I like like the pose. Um, the Medusa. Yeah. So uh, it's not quite as obvious from this but i tried to fit in a bunch of extra parts that were um derived from the the jason or not jason uh theseus no that's minotaur what am i, th what am I trying to think jason and the argonauts is it jason yeah yeah okay uh but yeah it's no um perseus uh, yeah per yes yes it perseus. is yeah. yeah sorry uh yeah, so I tried to like fit in a little bit of everything. So the sword there, that's the extra bit. That's a Vorpal sword. Big surprise. Uh, the shield, of course, is not going to look like a Greek shield because we don't have anything that's like, you know, one per one mm -hmm. uh, comparison to a Greek shield. But, you know, there's uh, stone bits in there, as I recall. Yeah, um, there's the, the, the shattered uh, giant's fist with a broken off club. Yeah. Um, so really great basing pieces. Yeah. Really great basing pieces. And these are the actual renders themselves. I mean, here, this is the fine job, yeah. and it is, it is great. And look at the detail on that; that is incredible. Yeah, they came up with a really nice fire effect on that uh, on that breastplate. And yeah, just realised that the the, um, the hellhound has this metal collar around it as well. Yep, it's very different to the Nozor's hellhound, which had. Um, it was was it clear plastic and then it had uh -huh. uh, bits on it that you could paint yeah really really nice yeah that sounds right there's, there's the brock yep holding the skull i went i went for the same pose that holding the skull i really really like that and they've come out yeah. really really well i think the skull really gives that thing a lot of personality the scroll where we saw yeah. jd painting that today uh, there's my goggle yeah <laughs> I, I just love that pose. It's so fun. You just imagine that <laughs> hanging on the Strahd's castle. Um, <laughs> just hanging out. There's the... I mean, it's a different pose, but the Goliath, it shows you the variety you could do because I, I don't normally go for for headpieces or, or headwear on my characters. I like to see them just... Right. Um, like no, no kind of hood at all I, I want to see the hair i want to see the head as much facial detail as i can but that giant <laughs> hammer with the with the with the piece on it was great and such a different use for these like stag horns because normally yeah. you have it on the head mm -hmm. and here it is as a as a chest piece that was, it was great that's all tom babby's idea there and yeah it, it came out nice and again the the these minis are so so detailed. You do get facial expressions, which is yeah, you do, you do, which is really nice. There's your uh, other ranger. Yep, the dritzed wannabe. <laughs> There's our gnome. Again, there's a ton of texture details on this as well, and it is it is tiny. But there is a ton of texture on it. Oh yeah. The Medusa, which Steve is painting up. Our sculptor's just do an amazing job translating all that concept art detail into actual detail of something so incredibly small. Yeah. So Steve, how how is your Medusa compared to this one? Are you going with the same color scheme? Yep. Good answer. <laughs> But the, the the tunic is not far off. Um, I can say that, and I will try and focus it. I'm gonna make you big against it. There you go. Come on, focus. There, there you go. go. No. Oh, you lost it. It's gonna jump in and out. Almost there. Come on. Stay on target. Stay on target. Stay on target. This kid's a paint in the background, I think. That's why. Let's move that up. 
No. Uh, he just for everything else. But my miniature. That behind so him. we get rid of Steve. Oh, that's fucking uh, great. Right, Steve. And, uh, oh, and that was the last one. That was the last one. There we go. Anyway. The tunic looks the same, but I'm putting other colours on. I've, I've gone for copper rather than gold as the, as the metallics. Cool. So we have a, we have another question. This one's from someone called OJ. <laughs> I think I've heard of him. Uh, and but a great Ooh, question. Yeah, it's um, a really good question. <laughs> it's a really good question because uh, Baldur's Gate Three, the computer game, has taken the world by storm. It's good. I played it early access. I didn't play too far into it. Um, I've been enjoying it. it. It's good. Will WizKids ever do partnerships with video game developers? Um, I think that that's certainly an option, and I'm pretty sure we have uh, talked to them about that sort of thing. Um, not necessarily Larian Studios, I think it is. Yeah, Larian, um, yeah. But it's more of a, I mean, you know, if they're going to do a, a video game based on D&D, it's less about talking to Larry and I think than talking to Wizards of the Coast. But that being said, I mean, you know, if, say, you know, the folks at ZeniMax were like, hey, we want to do Starfield minis. Yeah, I'm yeah, sure we'd yeah. be happy to talk to them about it. The, the um, So do licenses come to you or do you have to buy licenses from those companies? Uh, both. <laughs> uh, usually what happens is you know you get contacted by a studio that's like hey we're thinking about you know branching out our licensing department wants to do some some uh some partnerships and you know then yeah you know it's you get into the whole issue of contracts and yep uh you know how do you decide who gets how much and you know what minimum guarantees and deliverables and yada 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 uh, but uh you know uh, it says pro painter there, not uh, licensing. Uh, so <laughs> I can't really like give you a lot of more detail because I don't have a lot of more so detail. In the um, because for, for something like computer games, they will already have the 3D model. So especially Baldur's Gate, you would have something that, that's there. Here's all the characters. Here's all of the companions, for example. Yeah, it's true. So they could. Is that kind of half the job done? They give, um, you the, they give you it in a particular pose, and you go, right, we could, we could print that off. It's a significant amount of it done. Um, the thing is that, you know, printing is not this monolithic thing, you know. Um, everybody thinks of printing as, like, oh, it's as easy as 3D printing, right? You know, you just yeah. you know, pop it in there and hit the button, and it goes, and it creates a thing, and you strip off the unused parts. Um, or they think of it in terms of, like, old metal miniatures, where you would have, a, like, a hard rubber mold... Yeah. And you would be able to, you know, open it up and pull stuff out of it. But when it comes to, to casting plastic miniatures, you have molds that are made of steel or aluminum. Not a lot of wiggle room, right? So if, yeah. if you get a, a 3D model from a, a, a video game company for their character, they may have a lot of little curly Q bits and, you know, parts that hang over that look really good on screen. But those don't come out of the mold at all. They yeah. hang on, which is why some of, you know, our Frameworks minis are in so many parts. A lot of detail. The more detail you have, the harder it is to get him out of the mold. So you have to start like, okay, we're gonna like shave off his, you know, the left side of his face, and that will go in this side of the mold, and then we'll shave off the right side. You know, you hear people complaining about not necessarily with these, um, but you know, other companies that make, uh, you know, plastic build-it-yourself minis. Um, you know, why did that have to be? What did the guy's head have to be in three parts? Well, because yeah. there's a lot of detail to it, um, and so. When they design, when video game companies design miniatures, or design miniatures, design characters or monsters or whatever, they're not thinking in terms of, will this come out of a steel mold? They're yeah. thinking, you know, how many polygons do I have to, do I have to limp myself to so I can get this on screen and have it look good? Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot trickier than it sounds, but yeah, you know, I mean, if they've done all the concept work, it's really kind of just up to us at that point to say, Okay, can we can we back off on that guy's beard a little bit? You know, can we make it like closer to his chest instead of sticking straight out? You know, mm -hmm. whatever it takes to make sure that we don't have what they call undercuts, where the you know the part is grasping on and you can't pull it out of the mold. Because I, I think with um, in terms of the the characters like the companions from Baldur's Gate Three, we've seen um, with with kids have done the. 
Companions of the Hall, mm -hmm. Champions of the Lance. Um, so we've we've seen those and and um, Critical Role. Those teams yep. of heroes that we've all come to sort of know and love. Baldur's Gate 3, the popularity of it is certainly up there that I think you'd have people who are just buy it for the collectability. Um, right. That that would be something, I think. Yeah. You know, if, if a position opens up in licensing, Dave, you know, you need to apply. <laughs> <laughs> don't tease me don't tease me <laughs> i could do it but you know the funny thing is i mean you're you're basically sitting here talking with somebody who's like has this little tiny modicum of information about like how licensing works so you know they they may listen to my explanation of how easy it is and go <laughs> if only it were that easy <laughs> there's so much more involved you're so oversimplifying it jd don't make it sound so simple um it's a cup of tea and a biscuit and a sit down <laughs> yeah right everybody shakes hands and you're done yep the money just starts rolling in there you go what do you think audience could i do it <laughs> <laughs> Who, who do who do you want to see making contracts with uh, with kids? Who do I want to see? No, I'm just well, the audience shouting in general. out to the audience. Okay, that's the uh, that's. Uh... I'll, I'll get you some business. <laughs> Permission. Is this is this I can have three anyone. minis. So if I owned a company, who would I want running my contracts department? Well, me, Steve, obviously. Obviously, and if I couldn't get you, then it would be Sylvester <laughs> Stallone's character from Tulsa King. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's great. I have not actually watched that. I've seen ads for it. Oh, it's, it's it really good? good. Yeah, really good. And he's um, he, he's not playing the full kind of uh, action hero as such. But it's it is a... I really enjoyed that. I may have to give that a watch. All right, so there's the there's the wash coat done of the original green, or at least something really close to it. And now I can start focusing on other details. Got to paint his loincloth, got to finish his hair, got to paint his eyes and teeth. Well, we are down to the last half hour. Can JD so, get it done in that amount of time? <laughs> if you have more questions, do ask them. Or but ever hold your peace or wait until JD gets <laughs> back. Is is there um what uh let's see what can we break any rules? What's what's the next <laughs> release? <laughs> what's coming out next week? <laughs> uh let me think. Um I well there's a new season of Archer that just started. Um <laughs> uh let's see, I don't think we're gonna see uh Severance season two anytime soon. That's unfortunate, but you know. Writer strike and actor strike and all that. Um, well, that's that, that's also. I mean, that's just pushing things out. The, the longer it goes on, um, but I'm on the actor side. Don't get me wrong. Oh yeah, um, I agree. It, it, it pushes, it pushes things out, doesn't it? And the schedules go out out the window, and um, we're gonna uh, our TVs will all be filled up with uh, repeats. Yeah. At some point. Yeah. But I understand. So we have uh, some more questions coming in. Are they from to OJ? They are. <laughs> I, I love the fact he's sitting next to you, but he'd rather talk to us than you. Right? Yeah, he never <laughs> asked me questions like this when we're just hanging out. <laughs> is he a bit of a fanboy? Wow, you work at WizKids. 
Can you get mini? Can you get miniatures? Can you get me a dragon? You know, here's how much of a fanboy the OJ is. Um, we were just talking earlier about he is finally getting around to getting uh, a map framed that I gave him a long time ago. They were wow. they were made at Wizards of the Coast and uh, they didn't really have a use for them. And they were like, you know, we made these. They're huge. We don't really want to store yeah. them. If anybody wants these, take them home. And I I said, sure, I'll take one. I didn't have any place to put it, so I just kind of like kept it rolled up in a corner. Kept and uh, eventually, you know, I met OJ and, you know, we got to be friends and I was like, hey, man, you know, you're kind of a big fan of the Forgotten Realms. Do you like this map? And he's like, oh, man, I would love this map. So he has that map now and he's had it for 14 years. Yeah, been a while. Um, but uh, he's finally getting around to getting it framed. But it is a huge map. I think it's four feet by six feet. Wow. Of, of the Forgotten Realms at the time of third edition. Oh, oh, very nice. Yeah, it is gigantic. <laughs> I've got a map like that. <laughs> where, where, does, where does the name come from? The OJ. His last name is Olin Jack. OJ. Uh, yeah, it has nothing to do with the, uh, you know, the former football player. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> We have another question. This one's from Baron. <laughs> oh, okay. Silent, finally, somebody other than OJ. All right. <laughs> Is there something you didn't do with Wave 3 that you want to do with Wave 4? Um, yeah, there is. There's, um, I kind of want to like re examine um, clear parts. Um, yeah. And maybe that's actually a good question to, uh, to kind of phrase to, to the entire audience and everybody have a chance to weigh in on this, but what are your feelings on clear parts on the sprue miniatures? Like, do you like to see those? Do you want more? Do you want fewer? Do you just paint over that stuff anyway? I, I've, I've been, I enjoy it, but I like, um, I, I want to know, I, I want to know what else we could do with them. So we've seen spell effects or flaming swords and that kind of thing. Uh, is there any way we could, like, a figure who is part way through casting invisibility, <laughs> so parts of their body is clear? Um, well, you can always paint a clear someone, figure that way. Someone stepping through a portal, so the portal could be clear, so you could add any kind of color scheme you want to it. But you have this personal the, um... demon or thing coming through. And maybe the thing coming through is optional, is the optional parts. We definitely did the uh, the clear portal thing uh, actually fairly early on, like I think back in wave four. Um, it, was a, it was a while ago with uh, Blink Dogs. Oh. So, yeah, one of the, the Nolzers... Marvelous Miniatures Waves has a uh, Blink Dog miniature that um, is jumping out of a portal. What? So here's here's a question regarding the the old stuff because, like for my for example, my local gaming store they have they have they stock with kids. Uh, they've only got so much shelf space, and they get the new wave in, and it pretty much replaces anything they have. <laughs> Yeah. So if it if it was something like you said, this is a I don't even remember this mini from Wave Four, which is going to be a long time ago. Um, if you're out of stock of it, is it just a matter of trying to find it? Will we will we see a revival of some of the the, the best oh, yeah. sellers from the old originals? Absolutely. There very little actually from the Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures line or the deep cuts for that matter goes yeah. out of print um there are things that we you know decide okay well that's you know we're gonna replace that with a better sculpt or whatever um and so you know we just stop printing the older version of it um but most of that stuff yeah i mean you know we've got we've got an availability list and uh if you see it go out of stock if you see something that you're like hey i really want this but nobody seems to have it yeah, you know, talk to your retailer. Have your retailer talk to their distributor. Have the distributor talk to us because chances are we're making it, and we just don't realize that somebody's out. 
Okay, you've heard that, folks. You've been given your instructions. <laughs> yeah. Go Don't tell your retailer when you want minis. See, um, do retailers get any benefits from WizKids? So if they buy, like, a case, do they get some extras, or is there any... Um, well, there's not really like with, or posters or that kind of thing. Uh, there's not really a like a case incentive kind of thing. Like you know, uh, you sometimes see that with um, the collectible ones, right? Yeah. Uh, you know uh, the the what do they call them? The blind boxes. Um, yeah. You know, but uh, I'm sure that you know. Again, you know, you're talking about what? What do the other teams do <laughs> with kids? I'm sure yeah. that there's like plenty of like retailer relations where they, you know. Where they talk to people about, you know, hey, if you order this many cases, we'll send you this extra stuff, etc. Um, but uh, yeah, if if that kind of thing's going on, I don't I don't really hear about it much. I love the uh, the ridges on this uh, goggle, this this particular set of wings, because on this one it was quite they're almost smooth, and on this one they're so deep. kind of feel like they're about the same depth i really? feel like maybe the ones that you did on that first one of have... oh no they, these ones are quite thin all right i'll take your word this, for it this one you've got a you got a few oh wheels. no 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 no! Yeah. i see what's going on there the wings are folded in yes so there's more folds so they're yeah 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 nope yep, yeah yep, yep. The i was thinking it was the same set of wings and no it's in blue. You get a little bit of flash to trim off on that upper right wing there on the the plastic the the, the unpainted one. That one. Yeah. 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 It's obvious to me, and I can see that from way over here. I need to break out because um, I'm I just I've only been I've just been using this, but uh, Wiz Kids or you as Wiz Kids uh, were very kind enough, and they sent me a bunch of sanding sticks. Yes. Why aren't you using those? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, I, I'm, uh, again, the, the, um, yeah, no, like, proceed well, with your excuses. I, I'd like to hear. <laughs> well, I was saying, well, what, what do I need these for? And now I know why. Now you know. It's those. There you go. I will see if I can find them. We still have time. I do actually have them right here. I got them. Is my uh, is the prismatic paints, everybody, which we were talking about earlier. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom. Lovely set. They're the ones we're, we're going to be taking to. Uh, we took them to UK Games Expo because we did some live painting. Um, we're going to take them to Dragon Meat as well because they're so diddy. Um, perfect. Yeah, absolutely perfect. Perfect size. Yeah, there we go. Don't have far to look for them at all. There we go. They're still in the box. <laughs> so I don't know what I'm doing with them. So you can't even say, oh, they're in the next room. That's why I never use them. And they're just right there and you're just not bothering. Man. See, I here we go. We're gonna open these up. We're doing unboxing. You came for a brush off and you can how do I get into them? You're gonna stay for a brush off and you can brush. stay for a file off. Yeah. There we go. So tell me about these then, because they've obviously got different grades on them. Yeah. So the sanding sanding sticks. Yep. So what you want to do with that, like you could take that directly to that little burr that's sticking up on that gargoyle's pinion. Um, start with the big one, and that'll just grind that down to a stump in no time, right? Uh, the big one. You mean the rough one? Yeah, the, the really rough one. So the lower the numbers, the more rough it is. Um, and they're labeled as well. For that. Yeah, on the side there. Yep, in that order. So, yeah, start with that 60 slash 100. One side is 60. The other side is 100. It's pretty easy to figure it out. Um, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, you're just going to basically grind that down, right? You don't want to go too far or too long because you're going to – once you get it down to a point where it's more or less flat – 
go at it then with the 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 next one, the two forty four hundred. Um, and then basically we just work your way up in the numbers until it's smooth again, right? So by the time you get to the what is it, the one thousand? Yep. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be uh, nice and smooth. Yeah, so I've got yeah six hundred one thousand. So yeah, that one thousand. If you started with that, you're just gonna tear it up, right? Uh, you know, big chunk of plastic Ooh. hanging off there is gonna just dig holes in your file. But yeah, you start with the big one, grind it down, smooth it out, just like doing your fingernails. You do file your fingernails, don't you, Dave? No, just nail clippers. <laughs> <laughs> I use my Rambo knife. There you go. There you go. It it is working. I'm I'm converted. It is working. Right now, you want to leave that box open and available at all times. Keep those okay. files handy. So, uh, those of you who are watching live, do you use these? Do you use sanders, sanding sticks, or sandpaper, or something? That has actually worked really, really well. I did. Cut, I did. I was trying to use the clippers to try to get as close as I could. Yeah, um, and that's that's fine. You know, you can even use your fingernail clippers if you're really desperate. Um, yep. Yeah. But, you know, use something that's built for the job. It's even branded, though. Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. <laughs> Almost like we put thought into it. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know uh, what's the retail value of these? Oh, I knew you were going to ask me something like that. I do not know what the MSRP on, on that is off the top of my head. I know we didn't hear anyone. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. All right, so now my troll has iron gray hair. We are coming up to the last 10 minutes, everybody. If you would like any questions answered, you shout them out and be for anything or miniature related. <laughs> Is there a question in the chat? Now that you've asked, I mean, you know. Uh, not yet. Question above. Oh, floating. There we go. Oh, see, oh. Steve, you and your Robocop headset. And OJ is <laughs> there. He's, he's covering all the questions. Look. We're going to swap you out, Steve. <laughs> OJ, do you want to move to England? <laughs> <laughs> Again? <laughs> uh, Dragon Skull Studio says. On flying or floating minis like the Beholder, can we get the clear base unattached? Um, like sold separately, or like when it comes in the package, it's not attached. Um, sold separately. Uh, why? Um, I mean, I suppose, but um, as for you know, just like not attached in the package, um. It certainly doesn't come yeah, that way in the Frameworks version. Yeah, right? it's, you have it's to attach it. Yeah, yeah, um, it's because it's two different kinds of plastic. Um, yep. The clear plastic is uh, ABS, and I couldn't tell you off the top of my head what that stands for. Um, and then the you know the the gray plastic is HIPS or high impact polystyrene. Um, so there are two different kinds of plastic. It's not just you know, hey, this one doesn't have any pigment in it. <laughs> um, so yeah, they have to be cast separately right because it's two different kinds of plastic being injected um but when it comes to the nolzers you know that's just basically pvc pvc you can cast it in any color right so you're seeing when you get that you get the uh the uh the the clear plastic base that's attached it's just sort of like glued on to the rest of the miniature 
um, because they assemble everything for you, with, you know, occasional exceptions. Um, like sometimes we've actually asked them, you know, look, this figure sits kind of low to the base, like a spider or something like that. You know, can we get it so that it's the terrain pad is over here and the miniature is over here and you can glue them together to your heart's content. Mm-hmm. Um, is that, does that answer your question, Dragon Skull? I, I, I know it's kind of like esoteric stuff I'm getting into here, but. Uh, he, they say the second. Yeah, it's, just, it, it, it's about being attached um, in the packets themselves. Yeah. Okay. They they are, I won't say they're easy to pull apart, but you can pull them off without breaking the mini. Yeah, for the most part. Um, sometimes, uh, uh, kind of what I was getting at is that sometimes uh, rather than uh, cast the stand and the miniature in two separate pieces, they'll just make it all one piece. Um, mm-hmm. And then do the miniature clear, but then they'll do uh, basically uh, what am I trying to like a mask over the part that needs to remain clear, the flight stand, when they prime everything else. And so you'll have the part that looks like it's made of like gray plastic when in actuality when in actuality it's just clear plastic that's been primed. Was that a long-winded answer to your question? I think so, yes. <laughs> You get me talking about all this fun factory stuff, and I just have all these anecdotes. Going back to what you was asking earlier about the clear plastic on on the frameworks, I like the clear plastic on the frameworks, but if it's a small piece that I end up attaching to the miniature when I'm gluing it together, it invariably gets primed when I'm priming a miniature, unless it's sort of out on its own where I can mask it. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bit on the fence with it, if I'm being completely honest. I, I, I love the fact that you can ink them and, you know, get semi-translucent effects mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. you still got to prime the mini. And depending on how difficult that is with the clear plastic on, sometimes I'll just prime it. So I have a couple of suggestions. I mean, if you're, if you're not going to use, like, the... Um... You know, stuff like uh, liquid mask, which is yep. really handy stuff. Um, but if you do use liquid mask, brush it on with a brush that you don't care about. Right. right. You know, go to go to your local hobby store and buy that, you know, 10 cheap brushes for a pound or whatever it is that they charge. Uh, do, you have, do you have the equivalent of dollar stores there? Yeah, um, we yeah. do. <laughs> yeah. yeah well, so we there's, have more than one, actually. Yeah. So there's that. <laughs> There's that method. Um, if you've got something that's kind of blocky, uh, uh, here it is. Painter's tape. Yeah, I use painter's tape. That's what I use. Painter's tape. And yeah. now, here's the fun one. Here's the one that nobody even thinks about. And let me see if I can find one that I've got handy here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I keep this right at my desk so that I will always have it in case I need to, to uh, mask a figure for priming. And it's nice and cheap. You know it. You love it. It's silly putty. <laughs> you can take this stuff and just like pinch off a little bit, wrap it around a section that you want to cover up, prime, and then pull this off and throw it away because it's now covered in primer. And it won't take the paint with it. Oh, okay. That's a good idea. I'm, I'm going to go on Amazon and get some of that then. Wait, 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 isn't it the same as uh, Blue Tack? No. More or less, but Blue Tack is designed to stay Blue there Tack for a does... while. Yeah, it probably yeah. Blue Tech does pull the paint off. So yeah, I read this uh, read this suggestion a while back on some forum I was on, and I was like, I need to do that. <laughs> that that's a really good tip. Because I, I don't I don't use the liquid mask. I don't have any, and unless it's you know sizable, I can't get the, the painting tape in. And I have tried. Blue tech and that has taken the primer off with it when I pulled it off. Yeah, I've got little places on my desk here where I've attached pieces of blue tape that you can't quite see um, that I use, you know, to mask something. And what I find I, I do a lot is I'll take a piece of tape and then grab my handy um, 
uh, exacto knife and just cut it into strips so that right. I can get it into those little tiny places. Now I got distracted. I started to paint the, the troll's mouth and I totally forgot that I was headed that direction. You've lost your camera again. It's okay. We're down to the last five minutes anyway. Yeah, yeah. This we camera's kind of got that same glow effect that the fire giant's armor had. <laughs> is there is there um, any plans to do more accessories? Oh, like so those? Is, yeah. Any, anything um, else you're coming up with? There, there is a, a long list of stuff that I had suggested originally uh, that uh, is still just kind of hovering on my desktop, waiting to be okayed. Um, so, possibly? Mm -hmm. But yeah, there's a lot of tools that I've picked up over the years uh, that uh, I find very useful. Like uh, this... The texture palette that I've got here that you could probably see earlier. This thing. Yeah, I wondered about that because it, it looks like it's um, you've got different bits and pieces on there. It looks like wood and grass or something. Yep, a lot of different I've never uh, seen textures. Like um, found it on uh, Etsy, um, but uh, I had built one myself actually after I first heard about the idea, uh, just using some random differently yep. uh, textured junk that I had sitting around. Just glued it all onto a piece of cardboard. Um, and yeah, you know, I mean, uh, if you're doing dry brushing a lot, it is really, really handy, you know. Um, yeah. Like, uh, this is a, a brush specifically for dry brushing. It's very yeah. short and blunt um, and very coarse. Um, and yeah, you just basically take that, get your paint on it, come to this thing. Yeah, wipe the paint off, and you'll you'll still have a little bit left over. But then you know this is not just wiping the paint off like on a paper towel. Yeah, where it's sucking up as much of the paint as it can because it's a paper towel and it's doing its job. Um, but yeah, you know you get that on there, and then you can also in the process of wiping the paint off, see how far you've gone and how much paint is left mm -hmm. on the brush, and that gives you a good idea of whether or not it's ready to actually apply it to the miniature. Then you apply it to the miniature. If you need more paint, hey, look, there's still some wet paint, not absorbed paint, like yeah. on a paper towel, still on that dry palette. Handy. I find it extremely handy. And that's one of the things that I have said, we should make something like that. That's handy. <laughs> do it. Do it, do it, do it. You think so? So, Steve, <laughs> we are out of time. Steve, paintbrush down. <laughs> I and brush down. <laughs> I'm going to take these off. So let's have a look. Let's do a quick round table. We're going to, and then we're going to wrap this up, folks. Thank you so much for joining us. You're in your last few seconds of getting your questions answered. So shout out if you do. Um, let's have a quick look. Go for the troll. Uh, it, it, it's that third arm. It really is freaky. It's quite <laughs> disturbing. Uh, yeah. how, are you happy with it so far? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love this. Is it finished? Or really is well. it, are you going to do a little bit more to it? Oh, I'm definitely going to do more to it. I mean, I haven't really like done the claws at all. He's still got the loincloth. The loincloth is the original uh, olive drab that I, I airbrushed onto that. Yeah. Um, and then... Uh, I've got to finish his mouth, his teeth, his eyes, claws. I've got to do these wrappings on his arms. And then, of course, the base. Yeah. And I still never really got around to doing all these weird little warm slash pustules them. things. Oh, they are nasty, aren't they? Yeah. I think that's probably disturbing. one of the worst features of the troll. I mean, let alone, you know, you can't properly kill them without fire. And the mutated <laughs> ones are just where <laughs> the things have been cut off and then they grow back differently and horrible. But it is the yeah, it's the lumps and bumps and postures. It's ah, oh, <laughs> it's not a nice thing. Uh, Steve, how you doing? Yeah. 
Are you happy, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. He said two hours. <laughs> he was jumping ahead to that to answer that question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm happy. But as usual, you can't see most of the definition that I, I can see in person, mainly because it looks white. But there are, you know, I, I painted it grey and then glazed it with um, with several different shades of grey up to white. Uh, and then I've started yeah. doing it in the base and now I'm going to glaze it up with um, various grades of dead flesh and power flesh. Because that was the, the style I was going for. Uh, and I've used copper instead of gold for the metallic accents and red uh, just around the waist and on the arrows and quiver at the back. Cool. Very nice. Yeah. It's a bit, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't ever look okay. great on this camera. <laughs> and then uh, finally, we've got uh, not one, but two minis. <laughs> <laughs> there's my uh there's my gray gargoyle sitting on the gray wall uh but yeah absolutely love it and then here's my other gargoyle who's about to rip your face off who i built live on the show uh that probably took a little bit i think about 20 minutes putting it together huh? um i am using super glue so to make it as quick as i can uh, but yeah, I don't have any. I need, need to get some paint on primer so that I can do it here because I've got a lot of spray can primer, but I need to do that outdoors. So I need to get some paint on primer because then I could probably could have painted it. But uh, are you, are I think gonna, are you going to dry brush that? This one. Yeah. Or this one. I'll do this one when I, when I primed it because then I can do the total difference between the two. Uh, yeah, I know. But I mean, the the one that you painted tonight was you going to dry yeah. brush that? Was it? I don't need to. Wet? I'm, I'm just using, I'm just using army paint and speed paints. I don't, I don't need to. That's what speed paints are for. So yeah, okay. I'm gonna cheat as much as I can. Um, There's nothing, nothing cheaty about dry brushing. It's just you know, yeah. it's another tool in your in your belt. Just, just bringing out that detail. Yeah. Army painter, if you're if you're watching, what I'll do you come round and dry brushing for you. <laughs> <laughs> it needs to there be dry brushed. It does not. It looks good. <laughs> He's got his tongue hanging out near. Right, next time we play a table game, you will, you're going to meet him. Yeah, oh, let me dry brush with me. That's how I'm going to defeat you. <laughs> yeah, keep it keep it in your pocket, you know, and just. So although, although we don't do the uh, gold stars anymore, uh, JD, who would you award the gold star to? <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, you asked me that question like you don't have beginner painter written there. You know, I think that I think that the best, I think the gold star needs to go to the intermediate painter there. You know, but well done. the the gold star for beginner painter, all yours, buddy. Ah! <laughs> of all the beginner yeah, painters on the channel, you, you have done the best job. <laughs> there we go. Uh, I win. Uh, <laughs> and there we go. There we have it. Steve, you're all small. Look. Don't be small. Go big. Oh, sorry. There we go. Everyone can see your losing face. Um, there we go. <laughs> I can introduce <laughs> mini Steve. Uh, right. Any last minute questions? That is it for everybody. Uh, JD, thank you so much for coming back and painting some frameworks. Um, Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure, always a laugh, uh, which is what we do. <laughs> is what we do. Um, Hopefully, we an intentional laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Steve's not laughing, but we are. That's the main thing. <laughs> I'm still thinking about dry brushing your miniature. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we will be back. We're, we're going to be back in a couple of weeks uh, painting some more frameworks, the Pathfinder frameworks. So uh, join us again for that. Um, we're going to be doing that with Dragon Skull Studio. We are also back in two days. We're, we're back tomorrow with our Dragonlance campaign if, you, if you're into live playthroughs. And we're back on Saturday doing another great British brush off uh, with uh, Warrior Prince. We're going to be doing that with um, one of our, um, <coughs> a new pro painter. We've not had her on the show before. She'll be joining us for the first time uh, based up in Scotland. So, uh, yeah, Herbalist 13 will be joining us. 
but until that time nice. um we'll see you again soon i've got to go do some prepping now um bye Steve's so deflated, he's not even talking a lot. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I've had a long day at work. <laughs> right, anyway, <laughs> we'll see you anyway. Don't go anywhere. Um, well, the audience can go somewhere, but you lot don't go anywhere. See you again. Bye.